Today I'm going to take you through the process of turning your artwork or your kids artwork into POD items, print on demand stuff, such as pillows, tote bags, pouches, and more. If you're interested, keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria, in Europe. And on my channel, I share my passion for art stuff and watercolor and mixed media. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so that I know what you like. And of course, I would love for you to subscribe and join the fun. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to turn your artwork into other items. Nowadays, it is very easy to upload your artwork or your kids' artwork or images, pictures to different print-on-demand POD websites and you can create a lot of different products featuring your artwork or whatever image you choose. If you want to know more about why you should do this, and I absolutely think you should, then check out my previous video, but today I'm going to show you exactly how. So step number one is make art, create something pretty. My best tip is to pick something you like and then once you upload it to a website such as Redbubble, you can see your artwork on different products and that will kind of give you an idea of it would, if it will look good as a certain product or not because different types of art work better on certain types of items and the more you play around with it, the more you'll figure out what works and what you like. So step two is to take a good picture of your artwork and I recommend natural light, lots of natural light. You can go outside and then usually I would recommend to place your painting on a flat surface. I think that's easier than to prop it up against something. That's what worked for me. Either put it on the floor or on a table or other surface and take a really good picture of it from above. If you're using a camera, then make sure you have the highest uh, quality settings because especially if you're going to create large items such as a big blanket or a bed cover, a duvet, something like that, your image has to be in a high resolution or it will be pixelated. And so make sure you're taking a good quality, high resolution image. Another option is to scan your work. If you have a scanner, I actually have a scanner and I find most of the time I prefer to take pictures. It's just faster. And also my scanner only contains a uh, size like A4 size, letter size. And so most of my paintings are bigger. I can't really scan them, but you can absolutely scan your work, especially if it's smaller. And again, make sure you're using the highest DPI uh, or resolution, uh, your printer should show you those settings. You wanna make sure that you're at least at 300 DPI. My printer goes up to 600. If you have something a little bit more high quality or you know meant for uh, artists, uh, it, it can go even higher. So just check your settings and use the highest uh, resolution possible. Step number three is to edit your photo, and this is extremely important. What you want to do before you actually start editing it is to check on the website that you want to use for the dimensions of a particular item and crop your artwork to that size. This way, you'll have a much easier time creating the product later on. I'm going to show you on a couple of websites where to find that information, but every such website will have those. If you can't find them, then just use their uh, you know, contact or help services to get that information. But this will save you a lot of time and hassle later on. So start with that. Okay, so here we are on Redbubble, and this is just redbubble.com, and this is the website. So where can you find the dimensions? We are going to scroll all the way down and there you can find on the help, the help center, help center. 
And here you want to go into the knowledge base, designing and selling. And in the designing section, you'll have designing. You want to go to see all articles. And then it's going to pop. If you scroll a bit down right in the middle, it's going to show you dimensions and format. So you go into that and then you have all the information. Uh, if you don't want to get too fussy with this, they also recommend here, you can see to use a single file for most of the products or all of the products, they give you already the recommended size. So that's what I'm going to use to just simplify the information. It's right there in the pixels and that's what we're going to copy into our uh, editing software and here you can find all the information for a particular item so if you want to make let's say a pillow you have the size uh, given to you so this is helpful if you uh, edit the image to start with with your product in mind uh, it can really help you kind of design the product because you know if it's a shirt if it's a rectangle if it's a circle or a square it's very different how it looks so the second place I want to show you is printful and you go there into their design maker and there you have all of their products and I'm going to choose the home and living just for the purpose purposes of this uh, demonstration and there I'm going to go into the blanket which is one of the best sellers uh, on my site and I agree I also have uh, these and my mom ordered them and everyone loves them they are just like super fun and it's just nice to have something unique so here you can go into the particular product that you want and I'm going to go with these blankets and then you have the product page and there on the left side you have all the information including the dimensions of this particular item so go to that place go to your website of choice and see what dimensions you need before you start messing around with your photo it'll make your life simpler so here we are in Photoshop Elements, which is the software that I use for editing my photos. And I'm just going to drag and drop that photo I took of this abstract piece of artwork. And I'm going to turn it so that it has what to me is the correct orientation. And now I'm going to the crop tool. And there, there's a place where I can insert the exact dimensions. They have a custom feature and I can put in exactly the dimensions that red bubble gives. So these are by pixel and I can just copy paste them. And now I can crop this artwork to those dimensions. Now you can see in this particular case, it's not really ideal. So depending on your choice of product and your artwork, you might have to go a bit back and forth with cropping to make sure that there's a good fit between your desired composition and the shape of your chosen product. But just to simplify things, I'm doing what Redbubble recommends, just doing this like one size. And then depending on the product, you will probably have to crop it again because not all their products are this size so now i'm just saving it in this new shape or cropped image saving it to my computer at high resolution high quality once you crop your image to the right size you can start to tweak it and here really the sky's the limit with my artwork what i tend to do is usually just um, enhance a little bit the contrast, maybe up a little bit the saturation. Of course, you can also, you know, cheat here and just enhance your artwork to make it look more attractive. You're not cheating. It's okay. <laughs> you have permission to do that. What you want is a product that you love. That's, that's the goal here. I'm going to show you now how I edit two images. 
uh, just give you a taste of the possibilities. But before I do that, I'm going to crop them to the dimensions of the throw blanket on Printful, which is a lovely item. It's a great gift. It's just like, you know, a soft, comfy blanket that you can throw in the washer without a problem. I've done it many, many times. I have kids. Everything gets dirty here. So I'm just cropping it, making sure that the composition is exactly like I want it and just putting it in an orientation that makes sense to me for the editing process. And I'm going to show you what I do. Obviously this is different on every software, but this is just to give you kind of an idea on, you know, what you should pay attention to. So I'm going to start with this image. I have actually in my Photoshop elements, I have a software called RadLab that is installed in it and it makes editing photos much, much faster and easier. But I'm going here to the basics, which you can find on every photo editing um, software. So this is brightness and I'm just going to brighten it a little bit. And then you have contrast. You can play with all these things. Maybe you like uh, a more exaggerated look. It's totally okay. Just, you know, do something that looks beautiful to you. And here you can play around with colors. Um, if you want to, I'm just going to actually not do a lot here. This is pretty bright. So here I'm playing with the saturation. Um, usually I enhance the saturation just a little bit because I like things bright, but also, you know, printing services and like actual printers, not computer screens have limitations and you can't really get those, you know, like neon colors um, sometimes. So be prepared that the finished item will look different than it does on your computer screen. So here I'm showing you just this Rad Lab, uh, which is what I use. I'm really used to it. It's super um, user friendly. You don't need to be a photo editing genius. It gives you a preview of all their different uh, settings and you can just kind of create your own recipe. So this is already, they have like these kind of filters to give you a certain ambience, a certain effect. Again, I just usually make it a little bit sharper, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturated, but it, it kind of looks like I took the picture in like perfect lighting. Uh, and then you just want to save it again and make sure you're saving it in a uh, high resolution. Uh, I usually use JPEG because PNG can be huge and my computer, it's not the newest. And when I start messing around with really, really large images, like, you know, 60 megabytes, 70 megabytes, just like editing them or a bunch of them, uh, it doesn't like it. Usually these uh, POD websites will tell you if the quality of your image is not good enough. You will know that before you actually want to order your product. Uh, so if that happens, you can just go back and play around a little bit more with your settings and your saving image settings. But you want to make sure that it's just like a high quality file. Otherwise, your product will not look as good as it can. Once you have your image edited, cropped and saved, you can upload it to your chosen website. And when it comes to a website, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience. I've only used a few for most of like my recent product. I have been using a Printful because I can use them uh, in my shop. And so I want to, when I order stuff, I want to see exactly how it is, the quality that they make in their warehouse and i think the overall website might be a little bit more challenging if you're just starting out with pod so if you're just starting out it might be better to start with something like red bubble or society six just to kind of get a hang of this process What's nice about the Redbubble website, I've also ordered some products from there, like their bath mat, and I think in the past, um, tote bags and pouches, and they were really, really nice. What's nice about the website is that you just upload 
your like one image they give you a recommendation of the pixel dimensions and then they kind of automatically create um, mock-ups of their kind of entire product range so it really gives you a quick glance an idea of if your artwork will look good as a certain type of product so probably if you've never done this go to redbubble I don't think I've used Society6, but I think it's kind of as approachable and user-friendly as Redbubble. Again, not from my personal experience. So let me show you exactly how it works on Redbubble. You need to create an account and then you see the big red section that says add new work. And here you press, you click the upload new work and then you just pick your file and it will upload to their website. As you can see, depending on the size of the file, uh, it might take some time, give it a title. Uh, all the other information is, you know, tags, description, that's only relevant, I think, if you want to sell your products, which you absolutely can on Redbubble without actually paying anything for it. Um, again, there's so much information out there, the advantages and disadvantages, but I'm just showing you how to make products for yourself. So now our image is uploaded. And if you scroll down, magic, POD magic. Now you can get an idea of how your piece of artwork or image will look as different products. And you will quickly see that um, it doesn't work on everything. But there are lots of fun products to choose from, from stickers to shower curtains, to clothes, accessories, so many things. And again, you can go into each product and see the different specifications and kind of change the um, cropping again or the positioning, the composition if you want. Uh, there are like, they have new stuff all the time. So now they have cat mats, dog mats. I didn't even know this was a thing, but <laughs> you have pet bandanas um, and yeah the scarves all kinds of stuff journals you know you can print a journal with your own artwork on the outside lots and lots of possibilities it's very exciting I've tried their bath mats that's a really nice product it's very kind of plush and nice and it also went through the washer without a problem um, you know, if you want to create uh, like this pattern look, obviously that doesn't really work with my piece of artwork, but you can do that. And they just give you different options to do that. So lots and lots of possibilities. This is very, very easy if you're just starting out because you can quickly get a good idea on how it will look. So I'm just scrolling through the products. And on Redbubble, sometimes they have different products kind of hidden in the same category. So here, here you can see there are pouches, laptop skins, and sleeves. And I really, really like their zipper pouches. And I'll show you how they look later on. But, you know, you just have to take a close look at the different products. And yeah, and then you can set this for your own personal use. So nobody will see um, your work. Uh, if you don't want them to see and that's it and then you can save your work and later on you can choose the products that you want to buy so i'm saving it and you're kind of done it's as simple as that with redbubble it really is quite quite a simple process so as i said it's a good place to start and once this is complete, the processing, it's going to pop up a new page with, again, more images of all the products you can choose from. So if you see something you're interested in, you can press the three dots below that. I want to show you the zipper pouches because they are really, really fun. And you can go to view product page. This is for sharing if you want to share that image to your social media, but you want to go to view product page. There we go. <laughs> and then it's going to appear and you can see as I'm filming it, there's 30% off. Uh, these pouches in particular, I've 
ordered quite a few. I think now I'm done. I'm down to like my last one or two because I gifted so many of them. I didn't even intend to. Like my friends saw them and loved them. And not to say that, you know, they're so fabulous, but just like people really love these. And they're quite um, sturdy and yeah, kind of heavy duty, kind of. It's like a thick fabric and the zipper seems uh, sturdy. And they come in different sizes, really, really useful stuff. I've had mine for years with kind of older artwork and I really do love them. So pick what you like and then you can just uh, add it to your cart. And from there, it's just like shopping in any other. Now, if you're shop. interested in more um, like canvases and different types of, let's say, uh, wall art, there are many websites that specialize in that i think mostly people use it for like family photos but you can also use these services to print your artwork and they usually create they usually have a really nice range and high quality uh, because that's their specialty so they will have canvases they will have um different materials like you can print nowadays on metal acrylics all kinds of things uh, so those websites you should also check. I'm in Austria, so I always uh, try to use local stuff. I've used Pixum before and had good experience with this. I don't know if it exists in other countries, but if you're in Austria or it exists in your area, then I did have good experience with them, uh, especially, as I said, with this um, printing on wood. That was really, really unique and beautiful. And I would always recommend if you want to order, let's say you want to gift all of your friends um, like pouches or tote bags with your artwork, I would recommend ordering one for yourself and seeing the material and seeing the quality just to make sure, just so you don't have disappointment later. I usually didn't have, I don't think I had any bad experience except one thing which wasn't really a quality thing, but more of a preference thing. So I ordered this pillow from Printful and this is, uh, you can see like the, the size here, it's not a square and I just don't like the fabric, like this particular one. They have other pillows that are square which have like this really nice like canvas cotton type material which I really really like and I have those in my, my living room. But this one is more of um, like a smooth, kind of reminds me of like training clothes and I just don't like that for home decor uh, items. It's a little bit, um, I don't know, it has like a little bit of sheen to it. It's just not my kind of fabric and I don't like it. So, you know, before you get really disappointed by making uh, bad choices, uh, just order a sample for yourself uh, and then, you know, you can order presents for your loved ones. And that is all there is to it. If you have any more questions, write them below in the comments. Hopefully I can help. I'm not an expert on this. There's tons of information out there, but this is kind of the basics and this should get you started. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I have more exciting things coming, not related to print on demand, but lots of good stuff coming. Like my book, it's almost done. I'll see you in another video very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.